Welcome to a new video by DJSPRC. We have a Creality Ender 3 Max. This is a printer that I do have two of them. Uh, this is not mine. It's, uh, let's say, yeah, it is. It's one of my friends. Uh, he decided to grab himself a Creality Ender 3 Max printer because he does have a lot of bigger stuff he wants to print. <coughs> And this is 300, 300 by 340. But what he wanted me to do on it is install the Sear Touch from Creality on my Ender 2 Pro. I did do a video how to install the Sear Touch uh, on my Ender 2 Maxes that I have. They are BL Touches, and the reason we decided to go with the Sear touch is the Sear touch is physically it's made by Creality. It's designed for the Creality machines. It's basically plug and play. The BL touch doesn't like the stock firmware. Even if you go with the BL touch firmware, it doesn't like it 100%. <clears throat> there is tweaks you need to do to it. But with the Sear Touch, there's no tweaks. As long as your board that you have, the main board is a 32-bit, and you're running the correct firmware, it should work, no issues. And yeah, if you open the box, you'll have your manual, throw it out of the way, and you'll have your your Sear Touch. Very compact. It's black. It's smaller than the uh, BL Touch. I said BL Touch. That's a Sear Touch. It's smaller than the BL Touch. And it does come with three types of bracket. You have one. Your second one. And your third one and they are notched to accept where the wire is on the this machine <clears throat> and if you open underneath you'll have your main wire your screws and some zip ties okay one of the main things you'll need to do is run this wire here from the printing head to the main board. Now, what I did, I did run my wire beforehand. The wire is already passed to be able to save some time on uh, save time on this video here, because this is a long procedure. But what I physically did. I have a long zip tie. I taped the smaller piece of the CR touch that's right here to it to be able to fish it in the gain. Or this, I don't know how you call this exactly, a mole, wire molex, a wire keeper, let's say. But I cut all the tie, these zip ties all the way down. If we take the machine, let's put it up backwards, unzip tie these guys here and these guys, this guy here, until I got to the physical bottom of the machine. And that's where I was able to fish my wire until I got to the underneath the machine. Now, if we take the machine, Bring back forward. You do have two screws on the top here. You will need to remove this one right here. Don't need to touch that one. Unscrew this one. It is a small one. Remember where it goes. Then you take your machine, flip it on its side.
Underneath the machine, you'll have this screw, this one and this one to remove, to be able to remove this panel. Two front ones are small ones like the top one. The back one, you'll see there is a difference. <clears throat> it is a longer one. When you remove this panel here, be careful. Sometimes this wire, what Creality does, they start fishing it behind the board to try to put it smaller. Why? I don't know. But you can unplug it and put this aside. One thing you need, you will need near future to change this fan out. It is a 24 volts. Uh, they start making noise. Or you can remove the sticker and put a little bit of uh, some loop there to prevent it from sc screaming. Uh, one of my printers, it does it. I need to change it. I ordered better fans. I might even go with Noctua fans because they're deadly silent. But on your board, you'll see right here, my BL touch, my CR touch, should I say. It comes out of the gain right here. When I was fishing, this, this is super easy. You can grab it anywhere and start fishing it. Uh, my first Ender 3 Max, I did manually with my hands trying to fish it. It was a pain, believe me. And I decided to go back in my car audio days this is what sometimes we were using to be able to fish wires in certain places. And it went awesome for my other Max, my Ender 2 Pro, and this Ender 3 Max right here. I brought my wire out, and there's only one place on the board itself it can go. You'll see it right here. Just beside the main wire for your board right here your controller you follow that you'll see it right here in the corner it's a little bit hard for some reason the camera doesn't really want to focus but you'll see there's only one place you can plug it the other thing i did i didn't leave a lot of, of a, a slack or loose right here this is a bigger printer what Creality should have done is add at least six inch to this wire, but unfortunately they did not do that. Bring your wire out of the gain. I did put under a zip tie here too. I did not mess around with the stock Creality uh, tape here. I just passed it on top and brought my wire where it needs to be connected. Now you're supposed to Remove this wire here, the Z, but I don't. In the software, it forgets itself. Now, once that's done, let's plug our fan back in. And like I said, I just put the wire in the corner and make sure these wire are in the the notch. I grab one of my smaller screws, prepare myself on the screwdriver. And start screwing this one in. I do the other one on the front and I do the back one last. Because that way I can make sure nothing gets caught.
when you're putting it back together here. Again, I make sure my, my wires are movable. They are your main power. This has enough room. This is a little bit loose. That's what I want. You can bring it tighter if you wanted to, but I would leave it that way. Now, once that's done, let's flip our machine back on top. Upright, should I say? And I'll make sure my main cable here, it's not in the back of the machine. It needs to be on the side. Reason is, once your carrier is on top, you want to be able to get the maximum of these wires. That's why the other thing I did, let's flip it. <clears throat> these zip ties here, I did not, I waited to the end to put them. I went, zip tied it back in front here. And the other thing too I did, I didn't bring my wire out of here, directly where the, the, the head is. Where the Bowden tube is. Simple reason, it's like I said earlier, it's not long enough. If you bring it out, like the, your wire needs to be here, it's, yeah. And you want this loosely for the head to be able to travel. And if you don't do that, once you're, you're printing and it's, you're close to the side here, you'll just rip your wire out or you'll cause damage to your Bowden tube, or even then you can even rip the wires off the head here. That's why you don't want it too tight. And that's the reason I brought it out of here. That's what I did for my other printers. Never had issues. And yeah. Now once I zip tied it back here, made sure I had enough slack here. I just put one zip tie there, one zip tie. I didn't have time to cut these yet. But now my head can go completely at the other end and nothing is pulling. Just the bottom tube could have been maybe a little bit longer, but that's the way Creality did it. Ah, there we go. I was on my wire. Now let's grab our CR Touch that I've put over here. I took out the screws that we need. <clears throat> You'll have uh, two shorts and two longs. And you're gonna use the L bracket for the Ender 3 Max. Now in the kit, you do have two extra brackets or for different machines. For, I think that even the CR10 uses this one here, if I remember correctly. Now, you're going to grab your CR Touch. And basically what I do, I plug it in. Making sure, looking at the holes here, points that way. Because they're on the side here. Because so you don't want to plug it upside down to break the pins. And basically the reason I'm plugging it in right now, it's a lot easier. If not, you're gonna be messing with the bracket in your hands at the same time. I'm gonna grab the shorter, shorter screws. And I'm going to put it on the CR touch, align the hole, I just realized I just grabbed the long ones. If you do grab the long ones and put it on top here, it's not a, a major, your screw will just go higher there. And 
and you don't want to over tighten these because you don't want to break the plastic of the sear touch you just want them snug to prevent any vibration <clears throat> now on the ender 3 max there are two set of screws pre-made from Creality. And I go on a one and I just stop midway. Little dangle. And I'm gonna start my other one. Now, the other thing you notice, there's a up and down play. Every time I did one of these, I went completely to the bottom. And I try to put it centered as the most because you'll have a little bit of a wiggle on both sides too. Try to keep it straight. Now, if you see my wire is perfectly length, I say, and if I push it, it doesn't pull on it. If you go the opposite way, it doesn't pull on it either. And this is basically how you install the CR Touch on the Ender 3 Max. But you're not done yet. This is going to be a little bit of a longer video than normal. But now, basically, you have to update the software. You have to download it. Go on the Creality's website and find the Ender 3 Max CR Touch firmware update. That you have to be careful. I'll try to remember and try to refine it and put the link in the in the bio. Uh, that way you'll be able to download it directly. You're gonna start your machine up. Your screen might be a little bit different than the one that you're seeing right there. Sometimes they ship with different software. But what you're gonna do is download the firmware <clears throat> on a, a micro SD card. Okay you're really not going to want to focus but i put the software on the sd card what we're going to do is shut down the machine <clears throat> wait until the machine is completely shut down we're going to insert the micro sd card in the machine for some of you who don't know where it is you didn't have time to look at your machine yet i'm just going to unzoom Turn it a bit. The slot's right here beside the micro, as, micro USB. And what you're going to do, once that's done, you're going to turn on the machine. And basically, It won't want to focus. There you go. Um, your screen will stay blue. Okay. And it will stay blue for a couple of seconds here. And then it will, you'll see the Ender 3 Max logo or the Creality logo. And then your menu normal will pop back up. Once that's done, once you see this menu, Basically, what I do, I shut it down again, and I remove the SD card, and turn the machine back on again. There we go. Now, you will have, I'm going to try to back up and see if we can... Have the sear touch in in the shot at the same time because I get a lot of questions where do you go in menu certain sometimes for certain things now we have our sear touch here it is lighted up in uh, kind of a sorry to save the case but it kind of a pinkish 
I'm just gonna resume and let the screen go back in in view. There we go. Come on. Camera's very being very difficult. I'm just gonna bring it down. If not, she won't focus correctly. <coughs> You're going to press on it once. If you go under prepare, you'll have basically a move your access, auto home, set to offset, disable your stepper motors, and preheat for your PLA. Under control, you will see main temperature, you'll see motion. Then you'll have BL touch, you'll have bed leveling, filament, storage setting, load setting, restore, fail safe. And then you do have other stuff you can play with. What I'm going to do here, I'm just going to do auto home. What the printer will do right now. The head will go one side one side. Yeah, I'll back it up. There you go. What it's gonna do, it's gonna go down. It'll go back to the the starting point and go to the middle and go down. The BL touch, should I say the BL touch, the CR touch, wow. The CR touch will deploy and take a measurement off the bed. With the CR, the BL touch, you had to measure the distance from the nozzle to the tip, and you had to make the distance from the where it positioned on the machine. With the CR touch software of Creality, they know exactly where it is. You don't need to mess with it. It's like I was saying earlier, it's plug and play. Now, once that is done, <clears throat> we need to tell the CR Touch and the firmware where is our Z offset. Unfortunately, that's something they cannot choose for you because depending where you put this guy, the height might affect you. That's why I was saying earlier, I just put it lowest possible. It always worked fine for me because now we need to find the Z offset. Now the Z offset for this machine, I do know it, but I'll show you how I find it. You will need a piece of paper. And I'll just go back to the screen and I'll show you exactly what I do. I go underneath prepare, move axis. And I go do I go 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 go. I go to my Z. And now in this menu, you'll have ten millimeters, one millimeter, or point one millimeter. I'm gonna go point one millimeters because if you don't know what you're doing, and you go with ten millimeters, you're gonna crash your CR touch and your head to your bed. Right now we're at plus 10, 0 0.10, no, 0, 010.0. 0. What we want to do, this is going to be a little bit harder. My camera won't want to focus on both sides. You'll need to trust me on this one here. I'm going to grab my piece of paper. I'm going to put it underneath the nozzle and I'm going to bring the measurement down. And if you notice, the gantry or the head itself is basically going down. Right now I'm at plus 3.4 and my paper is still moving. 
I'm just going to bring it down to zero. My paper is still moving. Now, just to show you, let me see if I can leave it this way. Will it focus? Yeah, yes. See, right now I'm at zero. I'll zoom back out. Just going to turn it this way. You'll still see my piece of paper. And I'm just going to go minus. Like I said, I know the measurement of this one. I'm going to stop at a two. And again, my paper still moves. Let's see if it's going to focus. There we go. I kind of see it. But you see it, I'm at minus 2.0. I'm going to bring it down again. I'll stop at the three. And my paper still moves. Bring it down. Now I'm at 3.3. .3. Oh, I'm getting resistance on my paper now. I'll put a 3.4. And I'm having a hard time. I could pull harder. It will come off. But I'm at 3.4. I'm just going to bring it down to 3.3. Because that's a measurement that I like. I can pull my paper. And when I'm trying to push it, you know how I grab it, it folds itself. That's what I like personally. Now, if I go back to the screen here, come on, focus. You'll see I'm at minus 003.3. You're going to write that down on a piece of paper now, like I did here. My Z offset. Now, once you know that, you're going to hit enter we're gonna go back back we're gonna go under control underneath BL touch Oop, no sorry motion I mean I think I'm having a brain fart. Yes. <laughs> Under bed leveling. Wow. And probe Z offset. See, right now it's at zero. But what we want is basically 3.3. .3. 3.3. We're going to hit enter. I go down store setting you'll hear a beep not sure if you heard it but yes you will hear a beep if you don't do that what's gonna happen here you're gonna shut down the machine it will forget that number the minus 3.3 .3, it will forget it you're going to turn your machine back on. Okay, let's go printing here. Let's say you do a bed level. It won't remember where the Z offset is. Don't forget. Store settings. Once that's done, you can shut down the machine. It will keep it in mind. It can happen that it, lo it loses it. That's why I say write it down. Put it somewhere that you'll be able to find it again. Now, we're going to go back here. <clears throat> you won't be able to see the menu, but if you go underneath, underneath control, 
hit bed level, level bed, printer will do this. <coughs> It will go in the middle first. We'll probe it once, go back up, go slower down, probe it again. Knight knows the measurement. Now we'll do a multi multiple level uh, level now one of the biggest question i get asked often is where do i put my level on it you don't use a level it's technically not leveling your bed you're finding the dips and valleys because a glass can always bow your bed can bow it levels itself in the software it knows where the points are. And when you hit print in your slicing software, I use Cura, it will know, okay, here the, the bed is, there's, there's a concave. We'll need to adjust the software how the filament will go. Now, one of the major difference between the CR touch and the BL touch, the BL touch is a little bit faster, but you can go in a custom Marlin software and do this even faster. On the CR touch right now, I'm not 100% sure if it's doable to put a little bit faster, but this is something you do once in a while. If you don't move your printer, if you don't hit your bed, things like that, your measurement should be good for a while. And that's at that last point right now. And I'll go back to home setting. That's dead center. And this is how you level your bed with a CR touch. Now, thank you for watching. If you guys have any questions or comments, post them below. I'll be gladly to answer you guys. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button a lot. It does help the channel and I do appreciate it very much. Thank you for watching.